Oh, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. You know, one of my favorite things to do is read. And one of my favorite things to read is poetry. Well, what is poetry, you might ask? Poetry is an experience. Poetry isn't just lines on a page like a horror novel or romance novel. No, those are just stories pretending to be art. Poetry, however, is the finest form of art. You see, poetry conveys ideas and emotions to you. It paints a picture in your head. It uses the lines to illustrate a story. Well, how do I understand poetry? Well, it's very simple. In order to understand poetry, you must break it down into its most basic components. And this web series is being made to help you. Welcome to Understanding Poetry. Before you can understand poetry, you have to break it down. And each component of poetry is a little bit different. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the most used it can be broken down into schemes, it can be broken down into lines, and even children can understand it. There's one man who did it better than anyone else, and his name is Theodore Geisel, aka Dr. S. Oos. Yes, Dr. Seuss. You see, he was such a great poem writer. Although it didn't seem like it was poetry, it was perfect poetry. On the page amongst colorful characters was a tapestry of beautiful words. Now, what was one thing he always did? He rhymed. So today, for our first episode, we are going to look at rhyming. What is rhyming? Well, rhyming is when you take one word and it sounds similar to another and put them together. Take these examples. Cat, hat. Sock, Walk. Well, smell. It's very simple. Two words sounding similar, and you put them in a line. Sometimes they're in schemes. A, B, A, B. A, A, B, A. A, B, B, A. Doesn't matter. Sometimes one poem rhymes with the same word the entire way down. Sometimes there are multiple rhymes in one line. It's very simple. However, to master rhyming, you must understand what rhyming is. It's not just words that sound the same. Although that's what it is in conception, rhyming is an art. It is a witchcraft that you must cultivate in your mind and then put it on paper. Here, let me give you a few examples. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer. If you are a pretender, come sit by my fire, for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. What you just saw was elementary school level rhyming. One word with another word. Two words with one word. Very simple. But rhyming goes beyond that. Rhyming is a weapon of mass destruction. A weapon so powerful if you used it on a third world country, you'd break the Geneva Conventions. So, what is rhyming? Rhyming is the mass of this power put together to paint an image. That's what poetry is. But rhyming goes a little bit deeper than that, wouldn't you say? Rhyming is almost like lovemaking. It's almost like a song, back and forth. You never know what it means. It's just there. It just exists. It's been there since the dawn of time, and it's how our life keeps moving. Well, today I'm going to be sharing you a story out of the very serious poetry book. Now, the very serious poetry book is very serious poetry. Poetry so serious that if you were to laugh at it, you would be beheaded in another country. Now, the very serious poetry book. 
has many stories that emphasize these specific elements. Now, there is a whole chapter on Rhyme, but I'm going to skip the menial stuff and bring you straight to the powerful rhymes, because I feel like you need to hear some of the good rhymes first. Now, I must warn you, this book has very serious poetry, and if you can't handle that, you should probably stop watching. You see, the very serious poetry book holds poetry so serious of the matter that if you were to read it to a child, they would literally die and come back to life because the very serious poetry in the very serious poetry book has the power of resurrection. Now, if you don't think you're strong enough to handle the amount of seriousness in the very serious poetry book, I would recommend you stop watching. Maybe rhyming and poetry is not your forte, and that's fine. But I would suggest that if you aren't ready to handle the very serious poetry book, you stop right now. Disclaimer done, now let's move to the rhyming. Now let us flip through the book and find the perfect passage. I think I found it. This passage is called What Is. Now, I should give another warning for anyone who doesn't know what the poem What Is is. The poem What Is is so existential that you might want to become a philosopher. Now, if you don't know why that's bad, I'm not going to tell you. But just to know, the story of What Is deals with the idea of what is that? What is this? What are you? If you are not ready for that type of existentialism, I recommend that you stop here. If you didn't stop before and you don't stop now, prepare yourself for very serious rhyming about life and what is life. I think we're ready. Now the poem, What Is, has three sections, each with a different animal. For each one, I'm not going to tell you what it is because the line states what that section is about. Now, each one has a series of rhymes that you will have to understand. And if you can understand them, I appreciate you. But if you can't, no one's going to judge you. Not understanding these rhymes is completely fine. Now, without other way, allow us to begin the first section. What is a dog? A dog is a hairy hog who's as long as a log and can't wear clogs. A dog is an animal who jogs and slogs in the smog and who probably drinks eggnog, glog, and grog. So what is a dog? A dog is a dequilled hedgehog who eats quahog, who flogs underdogs and bullfrogs in peat bogs, prog, and the gulag, and who logs every game of leapfrog. The dog is the befogged demagogue watchdog in the pet world who appears in catalogs, travelogues, and monologues. That's a dog. What is a bat? A bat is a flying rat. Too small to be made into a mat and too small to wear a hat. A bat is an animal that feeds on gnats, gets chased by cats, and could quite possibly be killed with a gat. So what is a bat? A bat is a fat brat who eats gnats and sprats, who flies too fast to chit chat or look at muskrats, mole rats, and wombats, and doesn't fall flat when attacked by a house cat. The bat is the aristocrat acrobat autocrat of the flying world, for which there is no tit for tat copycat we can laugh at. That's a bat. <clears throat> what is a whale? A whale is a large-scale snail, the wholesale Clydesdale of the Pale, who's as strong as shale and went to Yale. A whale trails Abigail, bails jailed males, unveils scaled females, derails a logarithmic scale, and sails the chain mail monorail called the Whaling Dale. So what is a whale? A whale is a detailed dovetailed Airedale who's shaped like a handrail's hobnail, with the texture of braille or cicale. The whale is the telltale sea snail who flails and nails in order to prevail, but to no avail. The whale's tail is the story of how the flailing of the tail against the whale with much travail will derail the ship and its sails, to which the crew the whale ailed will hail the whale by raising their grails and wailing, All hail the folk tale whale. That is a whale. Fascinating stuff, isn't it? I guess they call it very serious poetry for a reason. Well, let's talk about it. You see, 
The story of what is, is very simple when you think about it. I mean, it's just asking, what is? Well, you can answer that. What is? That is. What is? This is. What is? He is. It's very simple. But when you add the rhyming to it, it goes from what is to what is. A question you can't answer. What is? What is? Well, the rhyming has brought it to another level you cannot explain. And that's what poetry is. You see, you have to understand. You can't explain, but you feel and you know. You see, when I hear what is, I think, what is? And that's kind of the point. You see, when reading poetry, you have to understand and analyze. You cannot just read. And when you're reading what is, if you're reading to read and not reading to analyze, you are not getting the full story. You are getting what is, not what is. You are getting what is a whale, not what is a whale. And that difference is very important when focusing on poetry. It's fascinating. But I think that you have gotten it. With that story, by analyzing and attempting to understand what is over what is, you are getting at poetry. And although it's not number one, it's a very important part of the process. And with that, you now are on your way to understanding rhyming. And I think that's the most important thing. So this will conclude our first episode. And as you end this episode and you are reading poetry or attempting to write poetry, I want you to think about it. How can I make my poem what is and not what is. And think about if you are rhyming, how does my rhyming fit together to make what is and not what is? How can this one word change the meaning? How can this one phrase change the story? Well, what is? It's a very simple question to ask yourself, but that story encapsulates what rhyming does. What is? It's a very serious question. So I implore you to ask yourself what is, and ask yourself how rhyming can change what is to what is. Thank you. I should probably get my book.